Hey, Upper Room. Last week, we took a pause to pray for Israel and the Middle East. We prayed for Kingman, and we asked God to help a youth pastor candidate discern God's will. Before I tell anyone in the congregation, I wanted to tell you all who prayed that I got a call on Saturday night, and this youth pastor said that God was pointing them to journey. So thank you for that. Lately, I have been reminding anyone who will listen, we have not because we ask not. And so I want to give God some praise and honor because we asked and God answered. I care so much for the young people of Journey, but also for the young people of our community. The guy that we're hiring is going to be a dynamo that really helps us reach the youth of Kingman with the good news. Before we dive into part two of this month's discipleship series, I wanted to ask you guys to pray. I'm learning we have not because we asked not. So if you wouldn't mind praying one more time, here's my request. We're ready to get going on our building project. Right now, we're wrapped up in red tape and waiting on all kinds of approvals from the city. They're swamped. We have total grace. We know that God has his timing and we just want to keep in step with him. I'm just wanting you guys to be praying that God would give us favor with the building department and that we could walk through this process with minimal delays. We have so many moving parts, so many aspects of our building project are actually coming together. I'm looking ahead and I see a potential bottleneck at that specific point. So if you don't mind, please pray that God would help us stay on schedule and pray that we can be a light to Kingman through this process as well. Okay, now to the main event. The theme this month came from our study in Luke. In October, we're striving to cleanse the temple. To quote 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse 19, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you've received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Do you not know that God has turned you into a temple and caused his spirit to dwell in you? This is why we're seeking to cleanse the temple. This month we're striving for holiness and we're asking God to show us any crooked way in us and then make us straight. My personal goal is to be holy. To be holy is to be healthy. I want to be healthy, and to be healthy is to be holy. Today, I want us to focus on the doors of the temple, specifically our eyes and our ears. It's been said that the eyes are the window to the soul, and I believe them. If we want to have a healthy temple, we must guard the doors. We must stand guard over what we let in. Do a personal assessment. What do you allow your eyes to see that may not be healthy? I have Netflix, I have Hulu, I have Peacock, I have Amazon Prime. I have a lot of options for streaming entertainment. There might be great stories out there. There might be some powerful art. But there's also a ton of junk. Evaluate your entertainment options right now. What are your eyes taking in that soils your temple? Going back to my days as a youth and young adult pastor, I, I noticed, it, it's funny, we'll tolerate things that we wouldn't talk about in church if it's funny. I've noticed it's, if it's gripping and suspenseful, we'll tolerate things we wouldn't want to experience in real life. So I'm calling you to join me in trying to fast from junk. I recently got rid of Facebook because I was addicted to reels, these little mini movies. I found them endlessly entertaining but not every reel I was exposed to was good for my temple. If there's things that you see with your eyes that aren't holy, it does have an effect on your soul. Now with our ears, I think about music that may have a killer beat or that might have a killer sound, but the content of the song, when you actually listen to the words, kind of messed up. There's a couple of songs this past summer that when I would listen to the radio, I learned I got to change the station, even though I love the sound and I love the feel of the music. With our ears, sometimes we listen to too much news or too much political news talk. Even if we agree with their politics, there's a line where too much news commentary is too much. When I fail to love people because of the commentary I'm exposed to on my radio or because of commentary on the news that I watch on t TV, that's not good. It's not that hard to get worked up these days with everything going on in the world. It's okay to not like the bad stuff that we see happening, but we can't live like God's not at work in the world. When we lose sight of God in our worldview, that's when we start to get unhealthy. 
all of these suggestions, if applied pridefully or legalistically, could actually cause you more harm than good. My goal is to not become an uptight Christian who looks like all I drink is lemon juice. My goal is to do my part to be healthy and holy. This is the Holy Spirit's job, but we are to be partners in this work of sanctification. You know, as we mature in the faith, I think sometimes we stop asking important, simple questions like, does this honor God? Is this pleasing to God? It's as simple as avoiding things that aren't pleasing to God. What I want us to target is a restoration of our consciences. When we get exposed to all kinds of compromising junk, we can become desensitized and our consciences get seared. They get damaged, they go numb, or they even lose all sensation altogether. I've done a fast from sugar before, and it's amazing to me how at the start of a fast, a good apple will taste just kind of blah to me. Not bad, but nothing like my sugary treats. Once you go off sugar for a little bit, that same apple tastes completely different. It's a symphony of flavor. This is what I want to see happen to our consciences. I want us to have them come back online so that it gets even easier to discern what is right and what is wrong. So here's the challenge this week. Guard the gates. Don't let your eyes absorb things that don't bring light and life to your soul. Fast from junk. Turn off your social media for a week and see how you feel. Turn off your news radio for one week. Read the headlines once a day, but then enjoy worship music or silence through the radio instead. One thing that I've noticed is that when I'm being proactive to avoid junk, I become more aware of just how much junk there's out there. We're not trying to be good enough to be saved. We can't be that good on our own. We're just trying to honor God by keeping our temples as clean as possible. Okay, Upper Room, go get them. I'll be back next week to keep this conversation going. Have a great week.